really possible to make a hoverboard out of an ironing board? Well, the answer is that it probably is. Everything in this video from now on is real. We're going to have a look at some websites, discuss some theory, and then we're going to do some practical testing. So you may have seen in the technology news this Kickstarter for the Hendo hoverboard, the world's first real hoverboard. So Hendo have got a Kickstarter up and they've raised quite a lot of money, as you can see there on the right. Uh, for the Kickstarter and they've actually made a real hoverboard which works this video and the analysis is that it's real so there's some more pictures here um, they've got various rewards including this white box developer kit and you can see the rewards I'll put the link to the um, Kickstarter in the description to this video yeah there's some more pictures there if we scroll right down to the bottom if you want to get one of these in fact all of them have gone um, but $10,000 gets you the hoverboard and basically they're delivering it in October 2015 in fact they have a ceremony to go and receive your hoverboard on October the 21st 2015 which is of course the day that Marty McFly goes forward to the future in Back to the Future 2 so there's um, some more stuff here about this uh, white box board including an exploded diagram uh, yeah the white box developer kit some other bits and pieces they've done. Yeah, that's the slightly cheaper box. I think that's $900 or then possibly a slightly cheaper option. And I think those are probably still available and you can control it with the smartphone and all sorts of things. So the only small issue with this hoverboard is that it only works over a non-ferrous conductive material. So you can see the surface they've got this thing flying on. Um, is essentially a copper sheet by the looks of it. It should also work over aluminium, but aluminium isn't as conductive, which is probably why they're using copper. And it seems to float probably an inch to two inches above the surface, less when there's a person on, and they say it can hold the average weight of a person. This thing is quite big though, if we just look at these other pictures, you can see it's uh, quite substantial and it's got these four hover motors on it. Right, so if you'll forgive the strange camera angle, what I've got here is a copper pipe and two extremely strong magnets, which I bought off eBay. And um, basically, you've probably seen this on YouTube, or you may not have, have but I'm going to drop these uh, magnets down this copper pipe, and we should find that they fall a lot slower than they should. Obviously, mag uh, copper's not magnetic, so they don't stick, um, but they do fall a lot slower than they would if I dropped them. There's some better examples on YouTube and there's also some where they've cooled the pipe with liquid nitrogen um, and if you've got a big enough pipe and you can cool it enough then in fact the magnets can take several hours to fall through the tube. So why is it that the magnet falls slower through copper than it does um, just through air? Um, and the reason for that is that as the magnet falls through or passes by the conductive material it induces a current in the material and that current flowing in the material, called an eddy current, makes an opposing magnetic force. So referring to Wikipedia, on the Lenses Law page, I'll put this link in the description to the video, this is quite a long page uh, with some formulas and some other description on, but the main statement is right here at the top, which says that an induced electromotive force always gives rise to a current whose magnetic field opposes the original change in magnetic flux. And that basically means that the induced current, the induced eddy current in the copper pipe, will oppose the original magnetic force of the magnet. So that's why the magnet is falling more slowly, because of the opposing force. So obviously we need motion of the magnet to induce the current, so we can't oppose it so much that the magnet just sits there, because then there'll be no motion, and then we won't be able to induce the current and make an opposing magnetic force to oppose the original magnet. Popular website hackaday.com have picked up on the Kickstarter for the Hendo hoverboard and obviously they're quite technical guys so they know loads of stuff. So they've basically said well probably this hoverboard is something you can build at home and there's some theories about, so well there's a link to the Kickstarter and some theories about whether this is real or not and they say that it, it probably is as I would say as well um, and they've got some theories about how this would work so what they've said is basically that we've got some electric motors spinning rotors with permanent magnets um, and obviously that gives us the motion of the magnets above the copper sheet that we saw on the Kickstarter so that's probably how they're moving the magnets that's inducing an eddy current which is making an opposing magnetic force and that's how it's um, floating so they've, they've said that the magnets are arranged in a hallback array which um, makes more magnetic field on one side than the other we'll have a look at that in a moment um, and then the rotors are over a conductive non-ferrous surface. This is quite important, if it wasn't copper, if it was steel, which does stick to a magnet, then obviously the hoverboard would just stick straight down. So that's why it has to be copper or aluminium, as I've said there. 
Now, um, eddy currents are induced in the conductive surface. The eddy currents create a magnetic field that opposes a magnetic field that created it, and that causes the whole thing to levitate. Um, and as they've said, basically that's it. So you can build your own here um, if you can buy the right magnets and arrange them correctly and spin them above copper. So let's give that a go. Before I do try it though, I should add that someone else has already tried it and um, this was published three days later on Hacker Day. Um, so someone has actually made the, uh, a smaller version of this. And in fact, they demoed this at Brighton Mini Maker Fair where I was actually at Brighton Mini Maker Fair. Um, although I was trapped inside an Iron Man suit all day, so I didn't actually see the demo in real life because um, I couldn't see very much. Um, and I was busy with the So Make It stand, the Southampton Makerspace. So, um, but basically, I'll put these links in the description as well. There's a demo video here. This is over a piece of uh, plate of aluminium by the looks of it, but they've basically got these two spinning rotors. And there's two videos, and eventually what they've done basically is made a thing similar to an upside-down quadra rotor or quadracopter. Um, but with four spinning rotors with magnets on and the thing basically floats above the aluminium sheet. So I'm going to try and build my own smaller test version. So what I've got here is a copper sheet which I bought off eBay. This is 3mm copper plate and it's roughly the size of a piece of copier paper. It's really heavy actually and um, it costs £25 in money. It's probably not the cheapest way to buy copper. Um, it's probably cheaper to get a massive piece from a roof, copper roofing specialist or something. Um, but obviously making a whole hover park in copper is going to be quite costly. But there we go. Um, aluminium is cheaper but not as conductive so you probably need a thicker piece which will end up costing the same. So um, I've got my a 3D printed rotor in fact attached to this Dremel. And I've got some magnets which had countersunk screw holes in so I've been able to screw those securely on there. Um, the slowest this Dremel does is 5,000 revs, unfortunately. So um, I've attached them quite securely. And obviously this will spin. And now we can try spinning this above the copper and seeing if it repels the force. All right, so let's power up the Dremel. That's pretty fast. And then if you get the cable out of the way. So you can see as I come close to the copper, I'm not touching it, but the Dremel is slowing right down. I'm really almost touching it, but there we go. You can see the um, opposing magnetic force is obviously causing drag, which is slowing this down. That's really hard to demonstrate, but I can actually, uh, I can feel the repulsion there. You can see the drill wobbling as it's just the magnetic field is binding but it's not actually touching, so it feels very floaty. I don't think it'll quite hold the force of the whole drill, or at least the weight of the whole drill, but I can definitely feel that repelling as the magnets are turning. So I'd suspect that we need um, a much, much stronger motor, or at least a motor with higher torque, to keep that spinning so there's the, the uh, magnets don't slow down as they get close and therefore we still keep the uh, current being induced and we make a stronger opposing force. Hackaday mentioned a thing called a Hallback Array um, and here's the Wikipedia page. Um, again this is quite a long page with lots of theory and lots of diagrams but essentially the best one is this uh, which shows that if you arrange magnets in a specific way then you can get much more magnetic field or magnetic flux on one side of the array than you do on the other. So basically it's um, arranging the magnets like this so that um, they, uh, they're in a specific way so the magnetic force cancels on one side and is much stronger on the other. So let's have a go at trying to build one of those. So here's the next design for the spindle. I'm going to be using the cube magnets I showed you at the beginning when I dropped that magnet down a copper pipe. Uh, basically I'm going to 3D print this thing with two slots in and then I'm going to glue the magnets in to try and arrange them in a hallback array. So this is my new spindle, um, so several things have gone wrong here, so it's very very hard to arrange these magnets in a hallback array, especially if they're really strong magnets, because they always want to turn around so they all face the same way. So I've glued them in and I've uh, basically covered them in loads of hot glue as you can see here, uh, but the first time I spun it up two of the magnets tore through the hot glue and um, basically flew off. One of them uh, hit the ceiling up here as you can see and left a nice corner shaped dent in there. So the next time I spun it up I did it inside this cardboard box so if the magnets flew off they didn't go anywhere um, but actually what happened is two of them did fly off again 
and they've actually punched clean through the box. Now one of them I found, um, and the other one I don't know where it is. It's flown off somewhere in this room, I'm pretty sure it went up. It's probably stuck to something metal, I thought it might be stuck to this lamp where I'm keeping these other magnets. Um, but I just don't know where the other magnet is and I can't find it anywhere, so um, I'll have to look for that. But basically be really careful if you're spinning up magnets, especially if you've arranged them in an array, uh, like a hallback array, where they don't really want to stay in position anyway. So is it possible to build a full-size hoverboard? I think it probably is at a certain cost. Obviously you're going to need some big magnets and some motors capable of sustaining torque uh, while spinning the magnets up. At a certain point you're going to saturate the amount of current induced in the copper anyway, so there's not much point going any faster. But really getting this sweet spot between speed, torque and the power of the magnets is going to be what makes this work. Obviously the copper isn't cheap either, so even to build a small demo unit is going to run into several hundred pounds. I may or may not try to build a bigger hover motor, but obviously I'll have to be quite careful um, in building a haulback array, um, which is probably going to be really hard with much stronger magnets. So watch this space and keep an eye on the technology news, especially Hacker Day for anyone else who tries to do it.